Hi there. In this method, we're looking at numerical methods, specifically fixed point iteration. Um, so in this video, we're going to look at why this method works and the process behind it, um, what this method actually does and what it looks like if we depict it on our graph. Okay, so um, what this method does is it finds um, the point where some function, um, g of x or the graph of it, intersects the point uh, the line y equals x. Um, so this method looks for this point. So what it does, uh, let's write this algebraically, um, it finds x where, um, well this curve is g of x, and it finds x where g of x is equal to, um, well the second curve is y equals x. So we're looking for the point where g of x is equal to x. Um, now the way we do that is we set up a recursive sequence. Um, so that's why it's iteration, because it's an iterative process. Um, and what we do is we change this x here um, for x n plus 1. So this gives us the next term in our sequence. Um, and what we do to find that is we substitute the number that we're currently on into g of x. So g of x n. Um, so we pick a point to start, we substitute it into our function, and then that tells me what the new function is, or what the new um, x value is. And now the reason that this works is because if we are at this point, um, and we put our value of x into our function, well we know that's the point where g of x is equal to x, so we know that the number we get out of our function is going to be the same as the number we put into our function. Um, so if we're at this point, we're not going to move. Um, so that's a little bit why it actually works. Okay, so let's have a look at how this looks like on our diagram. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick some x value. We're going to pick an x naught. So our first value we generally call x zero or x naught. And um, let's say we pick x naught over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute x0 into our function g. Um, now if we substitute a value into g, what that spits out is the y-coordinate of that point. So to find this, the, the value we get out here, if we go up from our x0, up to our curve, then whatever that y-coordinate is, that's our next x value, that's going to be x1. Okay. Now the glory of this method, um, and the reason it's so powerful, is this y equals x. So what it does is what we'd normally have to do now is take this x1 and plug it back into here. And that is what we're going to do, um, but the diagram allows us to represent this in a really powerful way. Um, so let's have a look at this x1. Now, if I were to put the x1 in here, um, what I'm actually doing is, well, if I draw up from this x1, it meets this line y equals x at the same y coordinate. Let me cheat a little bit there. At the same y coordinate um, as we had before. So we don't actually need to go all the way to the y-axis and then back down to the x-axis every single time. If we go from our blue curve straight across to the line y equals x, then that tells me what our next x value, x1 is, which means we can go straight up from there back to the blue curve. And then we can do the same thing over and over again, going from the blue curve, going from our function to the line y equals x and back again. Um, and you can see the sequence of x's. Um, so the first uh, x0 was here, x1 was here, so x2 is here. And you can see the sequence of x's, x3, x4, x5, is going to home in on this point here. Um, okay, so let's look at our first example of exactly how we apply fixed point iteration um, to a given function. Um, so here we're finding, using fixed point iteration, the next three approximations to A. Um, 
Um, we're told that we need to start with x0 is equal to 1, and we're told what the function of this blue curve is, is 1 over x minus 1 over 10x squared. Um, so what we're going to do is we simply substitute our value of x0 into g of x. So we get that our next term, x1, is equal to, well, it's equal to g of x0, um, which is equal to, and we'll do this on a new line. So we're going to have 1 over, well, x0 in this case is 1, um, minus 1 over 10, and then we get 1 squared. Um, and that, we plug that into our calculator, gives us an answer of 0.9. Okay, now the way we now work out the next ones is we do x2 is g of 0.9, um, which is equal to uh, 0.988. And then for our final and third approximation, we do x3 is equal to g of 0 0.988, where we get that's equal to uh, 0 0.910, if we round it. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what that looks like on our diagram. Um, so if we start with x0 equal to 1, uh, we're going to start thinking about here, um, and that goes up to this point here. Um, and then our next approximation is 0 0.9, so we're going to jump across to here, and then go up. Um, and then our next approximation is 0 0.988, so it's just a little bit to the left of 1, which matches what we get on our diagram. So a little bit to the left of one. Um, and then our final approximation in this one was 0 0.910, which is here. Okay, so hopefully um, you've spotted two things. Um, the first thing you might have spotted is that this looks like it's going to spiral inward quite slowly. It might take us a long time to get to there, especially compared to the previous um, diagram we had. Um, and you might have also spotted that we've also got a solution, a point of intersection to um, g of x equals x down here. Um, so we're going to take this opportunity just to quickly look at, first of all, what makes something quick or slow to converge and whether it will converge at all. <laughs> 